Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through how to understand our market diagram when we have a monopoly and we also have a positive production externality. And as part of the discussion, I'm also going to go through deadweight loss. So on the diagram that I have here on the screen, I just have a standard monopoly outcome. So our monopolist produces Q star units and sells each unit for P star. What's important to know about this diagram is that the curves here that track the cost of production, that's our marginal cost MC, and our benefits of consumption, that's tracked by demand, our marginal benefit or MB, well these curves only cover what we call the private costs of production and private benefits to consumption. So marginal cost tracks the private costs borne by the producer when they produce a good and our marginal benefit curve tracks how much benefit is afforded to a consumer when they consume a good. An external cost or benefit, so an externality in contrast to a private cost or benefit, is incurred to a third party, so neither the producer or consumer. And that can be the result of either the production or the consumption of a good. Just to make it clear that these curves only track the private costs and private benefits, I'm just going to add in on the diagram here that marginal benefit MB is MPB, marginal private benefit and marginal cost is marginal private cost MPC. So when we have a positive externality in production, then it's the production of a good that gives some benefit to a third party. And just as an example, perhaps, you, you know, if I produce honey, so I keep bees, and as a result of my beekeeping, there's a nearby orchard of apples uh, that get pollinated by my bees, which means that the trees bear more fruit than they would have otherwise. So there's a positive externality, which is afforded to the owner of the orchard who gets more fruit on account of my bees. In order to include our externality on our diagram, I need to include our marginal social benefit function and our marginal social cost function. So our marginal social benefit function tracks the benefit from consumption for each unit consumed, but not just the private benefit to the consumer, that's our uh, marginal private benefit, MPB, that's tracked by our demand, but also any externalities that arise from the consumption of the good. Our marginal social cost function tracks the cost associated with the production of a good, but not just the cost afforded to the producer, that's our marginal private cost, but also any other externalities that arise from the production of the good. Now, our positive production externality will be part of our marginal social cost function because it's a production externality. Because it's a positive production externality, so there's some benefit afforded to a third party, I'm going to treat it like a negative cost in our cost function. And this actually means that when I draw my marginal social cost curve on my diagram, it's going to lie below our marginal private cost curve, like something like this. And so just to interpret this for just some marginal units, say the production of the Q prime unit, for instance, we read up the private cost that is borne by the seller as a result of producing that unit. Well, that's at this level here, that's coming from our marginal private cost curve. The marginal social cost is beneath there. We read that off our marginal social cost curve. And the gap between here, the difference between them is the value of the external benefit that's associated with the production of that particular unit Q prime. And so that's how we incorporate our externality into our market diagram. Now, one common thing that we do with diagrams like this is think about market failure, so any deadweight loss. Usually we say a market is efficient when we produce where the marginal benefit of consumption is equal to marginal cost. When we have externalities, we want this equality to be our social curves. So where marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. And any deviations from this level of production that will be problematic and that will lead to deadweight loss. Now, typically also when we have an externality in production, we're just going to assume that there is no externality in consumption. And this will mean that our marginal social benefit function is now equal to our marginal private benefit function because that external component is equal to zero. And this means that, well, our marginal private benefit curve, that's our demand curve, well, that will be equal to our marginal social benefit curve. 
So on our diagram, if I find my social optimum, that's where marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. It's actually just here where our curve that we put in for marginal social cost is equal to, well, our demand curve in this case. And so that's Q optimum. Now, in this case, our monopoly only produces Q star units and Q star is less than Q optimum. So there will be some dead weight loss, actually this area here. And we can reason through this as follows. From Q star to Q optimum, the marginal social benefit of consumption, so the benefit that society gets from the consumption of the good, well, that's above the marginal social cost. So the cost of, you know, borne by society for the, because of the production of this good, but we haven't produced. And so that's problematic. So in this case, we've underproduced relative to the social optimum. And that's really it for this video. I hope that it did help. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping happy and safe.